and had a fever the entire game and um, made probably the biggest three since his last three um, in the second half. Earl Potts has grown up. He's the most improved player in our conference, and he's probably, for my money, you know, one of the top five players, although the league picked him second team all-conference. All so, again, the game was uh, symptomatic of our season. We get down, we fight, we find a way. Uh, and I'm just proud of so we're the third youngest team in America uh, with the biggest heart. And uh, that's why we're in the championship game. It wasn't nerves. Um, but uh, I just felt good when I got the ball for some reason. And... I decided to take the shot and it went in, and I'm grateful for that, that I could help my team out. It started to click really when, uh, like Coach said, I realized I've been playing bad, not up to my standards for the past three games. And I told myself today that I have to come out, and if I might want my team to get to over the hump, they going, they will need me. And I know we're all good piece, and I said I'm a good piece of the team, and I got to play like I'm a good piece of the team, and that's what I did tonight. Honestly, yeah, honestly, I could say yes because I knew the guys were feeling off of me. And when I, when one guy makes a big play, it's just like everybody, like, let's like just let's go, let's go, let's go. And that's when I knew, like, this is our game. We got to finish it out. We never quit. Um, we're always going to come back and just play as hard as we can, give everything we can. This could have been our last game, but – we weren't trying to go home that way, so we had to do what we had to do. I don't, I'm not sure if I understand your question. You're saying the pace played to our advantage? Even though they were off yeah, no, exactly. I think you're right on the money. We give up a lot of points, and, and people take shots at us because we don't guard as well. But our, our game is a, is a fast game. So you're going to, you know, we, we scored exactly what we averaged, and we gave up three points less than what we averaged. So if, if, we, if we're going to be in the 80s, um, we're going to win against most teams in this league. And I, the reason we're not, we're not a good defensive team is because of me because I teach them to play fast and score and push it and turn it. So our pace is fast. And, um, um, but these kids are winners. 
you know, and they find ways to win. And, and, and Earl hit on it when we get down. We never quit. But, you know, we, we were down and beat Seton Hall, Rutgers, St. Joe's, Towson, Delaware, Princeton, out of the league. And in the league, we were down against LIU, Wagner, St. Francis, Mount St. Mary's. So getting down is my fault. But getting back in my players, I give all the credit. Because these guys uh, and then practice every day, you know, give every second of every – possession every day and and it just always and and not that mount and jamie and, and all the other coaches don't but we we just do it we like to do it we like to think we do it differently and fairly dickinson is a blue collar school and these kids are playing blue collar basketball and when you see a freshman get 19 and 17 and go nine for 10 for the line um you know you're just talking about elite numbers and the numbers not don't come from obviously Mike's very talented but they come from his heart and uh, they come from um, a place that champions live and we've got to do it for another 40 minutes we've got to figure out how we can beat whether it's Wagner or LIU whether it's here or in Staten Island um, you know, that's our goal. We have, we said we were going into the tournament, we were 120 minutes away from our destiny, and now we're 40. Um, and 40 minutes is a long time, but, uh, you know, we have that opportunity, and it's, it's because of these kids. The girls' soccer team. Uh, the atmosphere was very, very, very great, I must say, because we've been waiting for that all season in the past two games, and we played uh, St. Francis, the baseball team had it going, and this time we thought it was going to be a little bit lacking because the baseball team has a game, but the soccer girls came in, and they kept it right there, and we, they kept us right, they were right behind us when we were making our runs, and it was just great. You know, I'm not going to reflect totally until the horn goes off and we're not winning. But I reflect every day because I just, I, I'm so appreciative of my staff and my players that when I go home at night and I've got the greatest wife and son in the world, it's Christmas for me every day. I really can say that. So whether we win or lose, even last year, I keep on telling Tommy, we were 7-6 and six and 2-0 and oh last year, getting ready, and I, I, I thought we were there. So I don't know if we're ever going to reach it, but, but our ultimate goal, and we set this goal in, in July, was to get to Dayton, Ohio. And because we just know realistically the Northeast Conference traditionally goes to Dayton for the first playing game or the first game or whatever it's called. And... Uh, but to sit here and, and realize how quick, and we haven't been on this campus less than three years. He's been on this campus less than seven months. Um, and how, how much the program has grown. But it's a testament to my staff and these kids. Because if they can put up with me, they can beat Mount St. Mary's and they can beat Princeton. And it's Because I'm a demanding coach. But when, when, when it's over, these guys, you can see the, the, they reap the... Uh, the fruits of their labor, and uh, so I'm not going to reflect until until we keep on winning. But um, I'm just I'm very appreciative of of everything that I'm surrounded by. What's excuse me? I yeah I, oh, oh yeah no I I talked to all my yeah man it's and it was this is my tenth year as a head coach and you know. I don't know. But it's not about me and the whole deal. It's about, uh, really, Mike Holloway was, what's the word for like being really good nowadays? What is it? Elite. You said it right? Elite. No, but like, no, the street, tough. no, the street. The, tough. The street, no. tough. Mike Holloway was immense. And Earl Potts, is just, he's, he's our, our, our heart and soul. He really is. And, and then you got Darian. We got a lot of players. So, uh, we can't get too ahead of ourselves on, on Saturday night. And it's ironic. Jim Calhoun, I think, is doing the game. Um, and I interviewed for Jim Calhoun a, no, a long time ago at UConn, almost got an assistant position with him. And um, it, that's going to be surreal, that we're on national television playing for the opportunity to go to the greatest tournament that God ever made 
and a guy that really was one of my mentors is going to be calling the game and and these guys are just going to be balling and enjoying it it's uh that's a little bit surreal but um the 40 minutes of basketball is between us and um and, and our goal and we, we need to still continue to work hard to achieve that goal Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, first of all, uh, really great game. I thought here were two teams really competing. Uh, after you, uh, Coach Rennes did an outstanding job here um, in a very short time of getting them back to getting them to the championship game. When I was a student at Mount St. Mary's, FDU had a really prominent program. They were excellent. They were always tough to play against. He's done a great job of coming back here and, and, and really bringing that feel back here to FDU. So a lot of respect for, for him and happy for him as a, as a person who's kind of taken over a similar job at a similar time and kind of rebuilt it. I can respect what he's been able to do here. And, uh, you know, I'm wishing him a ton of luck. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I had a great trainer, John Hoffman. He uh, took care of me, got me a lot of things to get done for my hips. I'm fine. Coach, early on, obviously, when the trees are falling like that, is, is there a sense that, you know, like, this isn't sustainable for, you know, especially in light of, you know, this really wasn't the way you guys were taking the Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm such an uh, internal optimist that I would, I thought, we we're going to make about 15 or 16 of them today. Um, I just felt like it was kind of one of those days. The way, the way we were getting them were the ways that we had designed them, you know, the ways we had talked about the way we were able to get those kind of shots. And so I was really hopeful. You know, we we're putting Will Miller and Charles Glover and Junior in those spots where they can make shots, spots where they're very successful shooters from. And we did a great job of that in the first half. You know, we didn't do a great job of in the second half of creating those same kind of opportunities. And that's something we've got to continue to work on with our team. Uh, but, you know, I mean, that's playoff basketball. You know, emotions get high. I thought we did a great job in the first half of controlling our emotions and making plays with our head and not with our heart. I thought in the second half we got, a, got going a little bit too much with our heart, and, and it, they, they were able to really push us to spots on the floor. And so, you know, we got a chance to really continue to work on that. You know, we'll have a chance off season to look at a ton of the film on the things we did well, and we'll try to focus on those things. And then we'll try to continue to work on our poise. I think that's to win a championship you got to have great poise. We didn't have that today. Well, you know, Mike Holloway um, on the inside there, you know, going nearly for, for, our, for a, a double-double 19 and 17 is pretty special. And, and the way they use him is unique. Uh, Earl Potts is obviously a special player. We thought he was a really good player. I thought he was a really good player. Um, the way he can shoot the ball is definitely a game changer. But, you know, overall, you know, I felt like we did a, a decent job on him trying to give him some tough opportunities. But he's a good player. And, you know, good players, when you give them open opportunities, are going to take advantage of them. Um, we try to make him shoot a ton of contested shots and try to deny him out today. We did that sometimes um, well. And then when our defense broke down, they were able to find him. You know, you got to give a lot of credit to their guards, Danny Anderson, Stephon Jiggins. They did an outstanding job of finding, finding their open teammates. They did a great job passing the ball and really sharing. And, and, you know, when you play like that, you know, that's why they're one of the harder teams in the league to stop defensively because they're able to score from so many different guys. You know, I definitely knew he was a factor in the game. Um, you know, I'm just always trying to preach to our guys to be aggressive when they catch the ball in the lane and trying to go finish. Um, you know, I, I'd love to say that, that I, I, I realized that he had four fouls. I, I didn't realize that at the time. I just knew that, you know, Greg Graves is really good at driving the ball. If we can get him the ball in some space against a guy who's fouled out seven times this year, now eight, um, that we'd have a good opportunity just to get to the free throw line. And, you know, we've been spending a ton of time working on those things with guys getting to the free throw line. You know, and so we got it, we fouled him out, and then we missed the two free throws. And that's pretty big. You know, you need those, those free throws to go down for you. But sometimes there's games like that. Um, there's days like that. And we still had opportunities after that to, to have a chance to win it. We just didn't put ourselves in position often enough. Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, we've got really good guards. And so what we're trying to establish here is a system where they're allowed to play with a ton of freedom mentally and physically and able to go and make plays. 
and and you can run it. You know, in a, in a playoff situation, you know, it's 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 like a double edged sword because you can push and score some like we did, or you can push into trouble. And you know, we just got to continue to work on that with them. Um, you know, I thought our half court stuff was excellent tonight. They executed very well. We got the ball to spots we wanted to. We got in trouble when we weren't able to kind of shift gears, is what I like to call it. And and uh, you know, we were still playing like fast break basketball in the half court. You know, and you can't do that. You got to have a recon recognition of that. But you know, we got two young guards. You know, Eli Eli Long and Junior Robinson are two guys who are below 21 years old, and um, I think they're very talented. And, and BK Ash is below 21 years old. So we got a lot of young guards um, that are going to take this as a learning experience. Uh, I thought we learned from St. Francis PA a year ago when we lost in the first round, had tremendous poise in the first round against New York. Uh, if we take this as a learning experience uh, like we did the year before, we're going to be right where we need to be at a, a year from now. Thank you.